Hey, Salvador Bregman here. Welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified YouTube channel. On this channel, we talk about everything Kickstarter, Indiegogo, equity crowdfunding, et cetera. And today we're actually talking about regulation crowdfunding, specifically how you can market your regulation crowdfunding campaign. Now, regulation crowdfunding is exploding, my friends, starting out with 74 million in 2018 and growing to 1.1 billion in 2021 in terms of total funding. This is insane as reported by Crowdfunding Capital Advisors, um, Crowdfund Insider, et cetera. This thing is growing. A lot of this growth is because the cap was recently raised up to 5 million. So you can now raise upwards of 5 million in funding. When I actually first got started in the industry, it started out with 1,070,000. And to be honest, like it took forever for the Jobs Act to actually be enacted and for these things to happen. But when it comes to this, at least in 2021, the major players, the major dominating players with these actual categories when it comes to the platforms were WeFunder, Start Engine, Seed Invest, and of course, Republic. And those are the guys I talk about on this channel all the time. I'm gonna try to share teachings with you. So we are on point when it comes to the crowdfunding and demystified YouTube channel. So again, those platforms were contributing for about 80% of the funding volume and also a really interesting stat. So when it comes to Kickstarter and Indiegogo, we've all talked about the success rates when it comes to those platforms. And one of the reasons why I spend so much time documenting these processes, when it comes to equity crowdfunding, it's at a whopping 68.4% success rate at the time I'm recording this when it comes to offerings that were successful and that were closed within eight months. The other quick stat I want to share with you before we get into today's video is that more than 540,000 investors participated in more than 1,500 offerings, which is more than 2019 and 2020 combined. And this is obviously in 2021. So the, what do you want to kind of take away this? This is massive, this is growing, this is huge. And right now you're gonna share and you're gonna learn exactly how to market your Reg CF campaign. And it's coming up right after this. So like I said, I got started in the industry in 2012 and I was doing initially a logistic regression for my mini econ thesis on Kickstarter. And that's because I couldn't find enough data out there when it came to equity crowdfunding, which was so frustrating and so annoying. And at the time, the Jobs Act had just been passed in 2012. At the same time, it really hadn't been enacted until 2015 and even took longer and longer for us to get a really good set of regulations going. And also shout out to all the people in the industry who have helped make that happen. So now this sucker is like full throttle, it is expensive. Exploding. And one cool stat is that in 2021, total financing actually exceeded all investments from 2016 through 2020. So how the heck can you get involved? If you currently have a campaign or you're gonna be running one, I'm gonna run through a couple of key tips that you need to follow if you wanna make sure that you can maximize how much you raise when it comes to Reg CF, smash your goal out there on whatever platform you're doing, and we're getting into it. Let's go with number one. Number one is that the sizzle sells the steak. Now that's kind of like an old school sales term, but really what it means is that when it comes to a restaurant, right, it's not really the steak that gets you most excited about eating it. It's that anticipation that is created with the sizzle and hearing that and smelling it. It creates so much eagerness and desire, right, and want. You're even in like the design district in Miami, walking by these different places, and you hear just like a waft of really nice smell, and it's like, oh, this, this, this smells really fancy or really great. I want to go in there and see what kind of products that this store is selling. So the sizzle sells the stick. And when it comes to a reg CF campaign, the sizzle is the form of your pitch deck, your campaign page, and of course your campaign video. So these are the first things that are going to give people that immediate impression of what your company is about, what you're offering, this solution, is this even worth their time? Right. So when it comes to the campaign page, this has to be professionally done. I'm talking about graphics. I'm talking about copywriting. Really thinking out you know, the layout. Right. How do you want to introduce people to this problem, the opportunity? Talking about the industry stats. Talking about where you are. How you're growing. Who are the key people involved? And really thinking that through, and not only just like you know the layering of those steps, but also graphically, how are you going to demonstrate those different key elements? Definitely something that you want to spend a lot of attention on. Also, when it comes to the video, now one of the cool things, I'll be honest with you, I'm not going to tell a lot of people out there this, right? I run a marketing company. Um, the videos with regulation crowdfunding are like a joke. Now, I'm not saying like your video is a joke, right? Take, don't take it the wrong way. But when it comes to Kickstarter and Indiegogo, so professionally done. You're investing ten thousand dollars in a really 
well framed, incredible video. When it comes to Reg CF, you even just have some people doing a selfie video and getting away with it and raising hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, I'm not advocating just doing a selfie video, right? But it's definitely a lower caliber of video when it comes to investors. And I'm not just sure, maybe that's just because investors are a little bit more dry than what consumers want, right? But you do need a nice, interesting video that's gonna move along, communicate the key points, and that's certainly gonna be important, as well your pitch deck, because people will look at your pitch deck. It's gonna be included on the page where they can download it. And also to me, the pitch deck is kind of the beginning part as a marketer of this entire process because it really kind of sets everyone's expectations when it comes to the video and when it comes to the campaign page. So make sure you, you invest in a really good pitch deck. Number two, your story sells. So tell it, my friends. You gotta tell your story, right? No matter what kind of capital you're trying to raise, whether it's for a VC, an angel investor, and if you're trying to certainly do a Reg CF campaign, your story matters. And here's why. The story is what gets people emotionally involved in what it is you're doing. That's what allows them to feel those same emotions that you felt when you stumbled on an incredible opportunity, right? Or when you were able to hash together a prototype and make something that actually solved a problem in the real world. World. You had that eureka moment, right? It allows them to feel those same emotions that you did. In addition, it allows them to see a little bit of the future. The story is the past. The vision is the future. So the more accurate you can tell the story and get people excited, it actually lends into them starting to naturally think about the future potential for the company. So the way we do that tangibly, number one, is when it comes to problem and solution. Obviously, it should be in your pick deck, pitch deck. It should be throughout your campaign page. It should be through your video, talking about the team, talking about the future potential. Um, I think this is almost like you know video equipment, right? A lot of the times. So when it comes to video equipment, everyone thinks that they just purchase a really good video and that instantly they're gonna get 30,000 YouTube subscribers or 10,000, and that's just not the case. There are so many channels out there that have really good videos, really good audio, really good lighting, all this kind of stuff, and they have less followers than I do, right? Or you have great examples where people invest so much in a great podcast microphone and no one listens to their podcast. So it's not enough for you to just have a great page, right? And to have like the things we talk about. It has to be structured in the right way. It has to tell a story. And if you're able to do that, you're basically using the equipment that you have in this analogy, you know, the podcast microphone or the video, you're using that effectively to broadcast a message that gets people interested, hooks them, gets them excited, gets them reading more, and wanting to invest in your Reg CF campaign. Number three is have a killer ask, my friend. Have a killer ask. I'm talking about those deal terms, right? So one of the things I talk about in my other video, which is kind of defining uh, equity crowdfunding in general, is that it's all about the deal. It's all about the deal, my friend, because whenever you're buying something, you're gonna look at the quality of the product, right? If you're going down to the grocery store and you pick up, like, I don't know, you pick up an avocado and it's really mushy, it looks like it's gonna go very bad very quickly, you're not gonna buy the thing, right? You're always inspecting the product when you're buying something. Investors inspect the deal, right? So they're not picking up the avocado, obviously, at the grocery store, but they're picking up the deal and they're looking at that and they're saying like, okay, does this make sense? When it comes to this, should this actually probably be a price round? Is this make sense when it comes to future equity? Is there gonna be a future funding round of some sort? Why would I do, for example, loading this company money versus I'd rather have a share or a piece of equity of the company? So the deal has to make sense. The valuation has to make sense. That's kind of similar to like, if you're going on a cruise, right? And you're all ready and excited to go and all of Find, all of a sudden you find out that the brand that's actually hosting the cruise like has a really horrible reliability rating, you're probably not gonna be interested in going on the cruise and spending so much money. So the lead investor is kind of like the one who you're looking at and saying like, does this person know what they're doing? Have they really properly vetted the company? Making sure you have a good deal is so important when it comes to this. And the last thing I'll mention there is like even, are you offering really good investor perks that could get people excited? Again, I had a really great podcast recently um, on my, my podcast, Crowdfunding Dimension My Podcast, and these guys were actually offering an NFT as a perk, and they cleared this with the regulations and all this stuff, which is so cool. Um, so there are a lot of interesting perks you can offer. What are the ones that you are? Number four is to do a freaking pre-launch. My gosh, I have been preaching this from the rooftops ever since I wrote my book, The Kickstarter Launch Formula. And talking about so important, something that is so underutilized and that most people don't even know about, which is called a pre-launch. Now, a pre-launch is gonna be more than just the Test the Waters campaign. So if you're talking to someone, they're like, yeah, we're gonna do a Test the Waters campaign, man. I'm like, no, I want you to know more of what you're doing, right? Tell me about the pre-launch. Talk about how you're exciting and warming up investors? How are you getting to anticipate that you're gonna be launching something, right? Do they understand the value of it? Do you even understand how WeFunder, Engine, Republic, Seed Invest, do they understand the functionality 
and how this works. Are they ready to take action immediately when you go live with that campaign? So pre-launch, you know, this is something again that's been just like, so frustrating to me. The number of people that just don't use this, and it's just frustrating to me because like if you got a tool that works, use the thing, my friend, right? So it's going to be virtually guaranteed to get you more funding, right? We talked about the test of waters, getting commitment from lead investors and others, and I think the most important thing here that we tend to leave out when we talk about the pre-launch is social proof. Social proof is one of the main things that causes people to take action and pay attention. So you need to get social proof on that campaign immediately as soon as you can so that those other people, those eyeballs that are checking it out on the actual platform and that you're marketing to when you're promoting through general solicitation, all that kind of stuff, they also take action when they see that, right? So social proof is important not only for getting attention but also for making people take action and that is one of the things you achieve or check off when it comes to the pre-launch. Want to take all the stress out of fulfilling your Kickstarter rewards? Fulfillrite is the turnkey solution that puts product delivery on autopilot. The top campaigns use this trusted high-tech provider to store, package, and ship their products. Focus on growing your business. Leave shipping to the experts. Don't wait. Get a custom quote from Fulfillrite today. Link in the description. So just a quick, really quick tangent or side note. Um, I was helping with this guy with his Reg, a, Reg CF campaign and we did a pre-launch and he his mind was just like blown away that a lot of his customers who actually um, were customers of his app or his software tool ended up becoming investors in his Reg CF campaign. It's because we did the freaking pre-launch and you're raising over 100K for this thing, right? So it's, it's really just, I'm not just talking about this. This really does work. And if that sounds interesting to you, if you wanna learn more about like the mechanics that go into that, or you want to talk about some of these marketing points in a much more fine point, or apply this to your unique campaign, definitely, man, book a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me down below. You can do an intensive one-on-one -on -one coaching call where we go through every aspect of your startup when it comes to what you're going to be presenting to investors, how to tell your story, things you're going to need to do. Can I help you when it comes to execution in any kind of way? You can talk about all of that on the one-on-one -on -one coaching call. So go and book that call ASAP using the link down below or go to crowdcrux.com slash coaching. That's C-R-O-W-D-C-R-U-X.com slash coaching and you can book a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me there. That being said, let's hop into the next point. Number five is to do online advertising, right? Now, advertising is kind of one of those things where it's like you can believe you have the best product or you can have the best deal, the best offering, but if no one knows about it, no one's gonna take action, right? Unless it's really promoted and advertised, which is one of my specialities, no one is going to know that it exists. So you make sure, you wanna make sure you have a budget, a budget for marketing and advertising. If you don't have a budget for marketing and advertising, make a budget for marketing and advertising, right? Um, and that's gonna be for a lot of different things. So I would say number one is retargeting. A lot of these platforms will allow you to actually retarget the visitors who hit that page. So for example, let's just say you got a WeFunder page, they hit that page, they go there, they check it out, right? Then you can retarget them when they go on Instagram, they go on Facebook, they're seeing your ads. Again, you're top of mind. They're gonna go and remember to either check out, they're going to check it out again, or discover more of the benefits of whatever it is that you're doing some of the metrics, right? Some of the cool stuff that's going on as you're telling your story, they're gonna re be more interested. You're gonna raise their buying temperature, it's called, and then get them to invest in your campaign. So number one, make sure you do remarketing. You can also target cold audiences pretty effectively when it comes to Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and even doing other kinds of platforms that are more experimental out there. Another great thing would be to do blasts or partnership promotions. Now, I think this is actually super effective and very underutilized. And the reason is that all marketing is about, I'm a very, I'm a very simple guy, my friend. And I'm not talking about, I'm not, don't fall in love with the tools of the trade. You know, I'm a writer and I love writing, but I'm not gonna fall in love with a pen that I use. I'm not gonna fall in love with, you know, a journal I use or even a certain method of communicating something. I'm gonna fall in love with the people that I'm teaching. I'm gonna fall in love with the people that I'm writing for. And if I need to change something to communicate better or to break through, I'm gonna be more interested in that than the tools that I'm using, right? So a lot of marketers will fall in love with the tools that they're using. They're like, no, the, the next greatest thing is to use Facebook ads, or next greatest thing is to use Instagram, or to do this, or to do that. 
I'm more of a fan of reaching the people that you need to reach through any means necessary, any means, right? So that, that's where blasts and promotions come in is that if someone else already has an email list or someone else already has connections to other investors that are gonna be related to you or part of that industry that you're going after, why not do a promo with them? Even if that means spending a little bit of money to do that or partnering with them in some way. There are great, a lot of different options when it comes to this, but that way you can get in front of their audience, they are people, you know, when you're going through Facebook, those are people too, right? So you're just trying to reach people in different ways and get their eyeballs and attention on what you're doing so that you can make them investors in your Reg CF campaign. So blast, promotions, partnership, another key element. And also PR, we didn't even touch too much on that. PR is another huge one when it comes to Reg CF. The next point is to change up your page. Okay, so change up your page. Again, this is something that's kind of a little bit counterintuitive, at least to me. Um, you might be smarter than I am, but this is definitely counterintuitive to me. So a lot of the times we think that when we write a book, for example, that it's like a static book, right? Or if we're writing a page, that's a static page. We're putting together a campaign page that's a static campaign page for Reg CF. That is not the case. You can change things around. I think the best example that I saw when I interviewed these guys was Drone Deck, and they did a million dollar campaign, you know, really great. Um, they actually would change up the title on their actual campaign page to deliver news or to draw people's attention to new things that they were doing when it comes to their offering. And they were also changing up elements on their page. So this was a dynamic, I'll use that term, dynamic moving document that you can change up over time in order to uh, create attention to certain areas of what you're doing, to create news announcements, make people aware of certain investor perks, all these kinds of things. Think of the page as not a static thing that you just create once and that's it. It's a dynamic thing that you're changing up, that you're changing the flavor of based on the questions that you're getting, based on the, what investors say they're interested in, all these kind of things are really important. And if you really want an example of that, again, go and listen to my podcast, Crowdfunding Demystified. I published a version of that on YouTube here, but also go and check it out on Spotify at crowdcrux.com slash Spotify, crowdcrux.com slash iTunes. All of those will take you to that link, or you can search my name on Spotify, Salvador Brigman, or my name on uh, iTunes, I think it will come up, Salvador Brigman, the Crowdfunding Demystified podcast. You will hear real world stories of people just like you raising money successfully when it comes to regulation crowdfunding, WeFunder, Start Engine, all these big guys, right? And they will share with you the things that are working. One of those was the, the dynamic page. One thing that a lot of pages have in common that are successful. Number seven is to educate and to hold classes, hold hands, hold people's hands as they go through this process, right? It shouldn't be something where it's like a set it and forget it. And believe me, I love set it and forget it. Like that's, that's incredible to have a lifestyle business, something like that, where you're having passive income and all those kinds of things. But when it comes to a Reg CF campaign, this is like an intensive process. You need to be putting in the same level of effort as you would if you're raising private money from an accredited investor, right? Or doing an angel round or doing a VC round. You gotta put in effort over time and that's the role Role of the founder, if you're in the audience, it's the role of the founder to put in that effort, right? So that effort, when I talk about holding hands, what does that really mean? So that could be things like, for example, allowing people to book one-on-one -on -one coaching or one-on-one -on -one calls, could be coaching, right? Or it could be, I guess, investor call uh, with the founder We're using Calendly and tools like that in order to answer questions. Objections and questions, right? When it comes to the sales process, any kind of sales process is going to be what holds people back from investing in your campaign. So allow people access Access. Let them book calls, particularly if they're high net worth individuals or are considering to put a lot of funding into the campaign. You can even consider doing other things, holding group calls, holding webinars, supplementary information and material to help people walk them through making an investment or understanding more of the company that you're doing, right? Um, publishing updates, right? Some of the great guys, um, Cornbread Hemp, that was another great podcast I did. And these guys were always publishing updates on their campaign. And not only were these updates like not only great informational, exciting, but they're also kind of fun, kind of in the personality of the company. So it was a way for those investors to like follow this almost as though they're like playing, you know, uh, fantasy football or something like that. And they're kind of part of this league and they're all part of this. And they're like, they're just kind of watching the founder do this thing and, you know, uh, do updates. And it's exciting. It's the same reason why people watch story updates on Instagram or the, while they'll follow people's Facebook posts on Facebook or why they'll watch Snapchat or TikTok. They want to be entertained along with getting valuable information and insights into their investing. Why do people check, you know, CNBC and all these, you know, MSN, et cetera, uh, Wall Street Journal all the time is that they like activity, like, they like updates when it comes to their investments. So there's a little bit of a tiny entertainment element when it comes to that. Make sure you publish updates and do some of the other handholding that I just mentioned.
So my friends, this has been a lot of information and I would actually love to share more with you. Um, if you want more information, number one, go and check out my free course on equity crowdfunding at crowdcrux.com slash equity course. We'll include a link down below. Also, you can check out my audiobook, Equity Crowdfunding Explained, available on Audible. Also, if you get a free 30-day trial of Audible, you also get a free copy of the book, which is pretty awesome. And also, even if you cancel that, you still get to free, get to keep, keep the free copy. I'm not advertising that, but like, you know, that's, that's kind of cool, I think. Um, so you can get a free trial of Audible. You can download and listen to many other books in order to increase your knowledge and make sure that you're doing a great thing when it comes to that. So you can download the audio book there. And finally, if you want to really kind of hear this from the horse's mouth, and I would say this is not for everyone. This is for you if you are serious about this. I don't want, you know, just to go through and make sure that this is something that's really, that you are serious about, that you want to move forward with. This is something that you should really be considering. If that kind of falls into what you're thinking, book a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me down below. And we can talk about how this would make sense for your startup, for your business, what you're trying to do, what you're trying to achieve, and even should you move forward in this path, or if you should, how can I help you when it comes to execution or implementation or when it comes from more of a consulting angle? How can I help you get this thing done and make you make sure you raise as much money as you can? Go and book a one-on-one -on -one intensive coaching call with me as well as get those homework and action items. So I hope that you enjoyed today's video. Again, my name is Salvador Brubin. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Number one thing that would mean so much to me just kind of as a thank you. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions and also come subscribe if you want more content like this.